Hey everyone, it's Alexandra Weber with Fasteners, and today we are joined by a very special guest, the one and only Joey Chris. Joey, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Joey Chris. I'm with Professional Contractor Supply. I'm an outside salesman and a safety specialist, and I'm excited today because we get to talk about the OSHA top 10, but we're going to concentrate on the top five. Yes. So top five, Joey, let's break it down. All right, Joey, number five is scaffolding violations. And that had a total of 2,251 violations. What are some of the common reasons for people getting the violations? Normally what I would see with scaffolding would be uh, rails not being connected or not enough railing there. Uh, sometimes the structure is missing planks where you might have to have double plank and you'd only see a single plank. Uh, sometimes the planks aren't long enough. Mm. Uh, is the scaffolding been tagged properly? Uh, and then the connectors. So these are all things that would lead to a uh, OSHA violation. Got it. All right. Well, let's jump to number four. Number four is respiratory protection. And Joey, some of those violations are caused by, you know, no medical evaluation, no fit testing, a lack of established written program within, you know, a company. What are some solutions that we could provide or that we could, you know, offer to our customers and end users in regards to respiratory? Okay, it's interesting that we're talking about respiratory violations here. When we just got out of the whole COVID uh, era, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's one of the reasons why it got elevated on the list of the top 10. Yeah. Uh, I could see this happening, you know, uh, we we're looking at dust masks, people that wore them or people that didn't. I'm sure some of the violations came from there, but I'm also pretty sure that it was a lot more or had a lot more to do with the half masks, the full face masks. Um, so uh, again, I can see this actually staying on the uh, radar for a lot longer than just this year. So some of the solutions for these problems are, are you getting a proper fit test? which people don't understand is not as easy as it sounds. Mm -hmm. People with beards, mustaches, um, they are very, very difficult to fit. Uh, so you have to try to address that before they actually wear respiratory gear. So some of the solutions we can handle here at PCS are uh, organizing fit tests from the manufacturer to make sure that these masks that they're wearing work better, right? So. Uh, the other uh, issue that we can do or the other things we can do to help are half masks, full face masks. There are different filters for different trades, mm -hmm. making sure that they get the proper gear to um, use when they're out in the field. Okay, enough with the respiratory. I'm trying to see what's the number one. So let's go to number three. All right, in number three, we have ladders. And with ladders, there have been 2,449 violations cited. And with that, some of the most common are going to be not using the ladder, how it's designed to be used, like using the top step, for instance, when you're not supposed to, or placing the ladder at an unsafe angle. So these are some of the common things that, that we've seen with the violation citations. Now, Joey, when you're on a job site, how many times have you seen stuff like this happen? Yeah, this is a common occurrence that we see out in the field. And it's interesting because I think the ladder manufacturers have really gone a long way to develop new ladders uh, for the trades. And that would include a, uh, a platform ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got lean safe ladders now that allow you to close the ladder and lean them up against the building. They've got tripod ladders that could get you into corners. Uh, they've really done some amazing things. So to see this in the, in the top three is a little bit shocking. Uh, I know that a lot of people talk about three points of contact uh, when they're climbing the ladder, but they don't understand that it doesn't have to be just both feet and an arm. It could be you leaning into the ladder as well. Uh, you mentioned the proper or uh, the angle not being proper when you get up. Mm -hmm. The other part of that is, is that the, the ladder can be leaning up and then we don't fasten an extension ladder mm -hmm. or is three feet of going above the top surface. So uh, one of the issues with this is there's a lot of accidents that happen, most falls, believe it or not, happen from falling off of ladders, which we'll see that it's in the top spot again. Um, so if we can address the ladder issues, mm -hmm. right, we'll also start addressing the fall protection issues because let's face it, the OSHA officer only shows up at the site once there's been an accident. Mm -hmm. Hardly ever do they show up just to see your violation. So if we can fix these ladder issues, I think we're gonna start cutting down on seeing ladders actually in the top three and hopefully get them out of the top 10. All right, let's see what number two is. All right, and number two, which was surprising to us was hazard communication. And that had 2,639 violations. Now these violations consist of a lack of training, SDS not accessible or maintained, and believe it or not, labels and warnings not being present. Joey, I can't believe 
labels and warnings aren't being present on these common you know materials so joey is there anything else that you'd like to add i don't have much to add here but i'm guessing that this would if you were using a hazardous material and you didn't identify it that wouldn't be good and number one no surprise here we have a fall protection with 5,915 violations. That's more than double the amount of some of the other violations on this list. And some examples of the violations are gonna be unprotected edges, no guardrail, low slope, steep slope, roof access, and exposed holes. Joey, as we saw earlier, those specific violations have more than double of the others. Joey, with that many violations, why do you think this is and how can people improve? Okay, as a fall protection subject matter expert in this field of fall protection, I have a lot of opinions. And when I teach in class, I say that fall protection or fall violations are always number one. And like I mentioned earlier, is the reason it's number one is because that's where most of our accidents or deaths or injuries occur mm -hmm. from falls. OSHA shows up, somebody fell, they're obviously getting a citation. And by the way, they're not only asking, or they're not only giving you a citation, they're asking you right after that, where's the documentation of my training? If you don't have that on site, that could lead to another violation. And then also record keeping on your equipment because it has to be inspected twice a year by a competent person. I think something that we can do here at PCS is give us a call, have us come out to your site, do a, a hazard analysis, uh, address the fall protection issues you may have, and maybe some uh, suggest some products that might eliminate the possibility of a fall. Obviously, with less accidents, it means there's going to be less violations, which is going to lead into the other violations that might follow it. So uh, we're special. This is our specialty. Uh, give us a call. We'll be happy to come out and, and do our part to help. Awesome. Now you've seen some of the solutions that Fasteners PCS can provide your team. And we've walked through the top five OSHA violation citations. Joey, thanks so much for giving us your feedback and advice on how to improve the safety of the teams that we work with on a daily basis. Uh, we hope you all learned something from this and that you'll continue to learn by following along as we post more safety content for your team. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, stay safe.